Japan has just released its longest serving death row inmate. He has been imprisoned for 48 years. His name is Iwao Hakamada, and he will get a retrial. Now, the reason why they decided to give him a retrial is because they found DNA evidence indicating that he's possibly innocent. So they want to go through uh, court proceedings again to see whether or not he is guilty. Um, he was convicted of killing a family back in 1966, and at the time, authorities said that there was DNA evidence evidence, blood stains of the culprit, but it turns out that those blood stains were not actually uh, his. Uh, blood stains detected on five pieces of clothing, which investigators said were worn by the culprit during the crime, did not match the DNA of Hakamata, the, and trousers that prosecutors submitted as evidence were too small for Hakamata and did not fit when he tried them on, which is kind of amazing because that's what occurred at the time of the trial, yet they still went after him and convicted him. Right, and now look, all the evidence doesn't always match up uh, perfectly, but you could have other overwhelming evidence, but in this case, obviously, they didn't. Now, back then, they didn't have uh, the DNA testing that we have now, right. obviously, but they could tell blood types, and, and then, uh, but that's incredibly rough, because there's millions of people in each blood type, and, uh, I, I, and he, the poor guy obviously didn't have Johnny Cochran, otherwise, he would have gone with, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Yeah, I, that's, that's exactly what I thought about. But there was another uh, wrinkle to this story that I thought was really interesting. So Japan has been under fire before because of the way that they interrogate their suspects. And in this particular case, he had confessed to committing the crime, but that was only after he was interrogated for 20 days straight. And in a lot of instances, they're literally tortured to the point where they're just like, okay, enough, enough, I admit. Yeah, no, everybody will break under uh, that kind of interrogation. So that's why they do torture oftentimes, because they're not interested in the right answer, they're just interested in an answer, right? So meaning like, they need to get a conviction. You know, even back then, of course, the whole thing was, who's good, like, are you good at your job? Will you get advancement? Well, it's dependent on whether you get the conviction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so whether you're a cop, you're an interrogator, et cetera, you're just going to keep asking the guy until he gives you the answer you want to hear. Which is, by the way, exactly why we use torture in America. Mm -hmm. uh, we tortured detainees until they said, yes, Iraq did it. When, in fact, we knew that Iraq didn't do it, and they knew Iraq didn't do it. But uh, if you torture someone enough, including a detainee we had in Egypt that we were overseeing mm -hmm. the torture, we did a mock execution where we were burying him alive. And he's like, okay, okay, Iraq, we, we worked with Iraq to do it. And, and then what, he realized the, that's what, what was going to get the torture to stop. I, I just don't get it. What does that achieve? Like, do you feel good about yourself no, that you just no, got no, a no. fake that's, confession? Yeah, I'll tell you exactly what that achieves. Okay, so that it turns out, of course, that he gave false testimony. Iraq did not work with uh, Al Qaeda, and of course, that testimony was later disproven. Right. Mm -hmm. But the point wasn't to get truthful answers. The point was to get somebody to say Iraq did it when Iraq didn't right, do it. Right, that's true. So we and, can invade and and and, and Halliburton, mm -hmm. uh, and this is literal, was at ten dollars. Their stock price was before the war. Of course, the vice president is the former CEO of Halliburton, and after the war, it was fifty dollars. That's why they did it. Jeez. Right. And in this case, it was to get you know a promotion or whatever it was, and it turns out the guy was innocent and sat on death row for. 48 years. Yeah, 48 years. And by the way, uh, th another part of this story that's so interesting is that he obviously tried to appeal it, and it took 27 years for them to deny the appeal. And then he appealed again, and finally, recently, the judge decided, hey, you know what? Um, I don't think that he's guilty uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, there, there's serious doubt in this case, so why don't we release him and give him a retrial? So now, obviously, they're not executing very many people in Japan uh, if it takes 27 years to appeal. So let me give you the information on that because I looked that up. Uh, so between 1946 and 1993, the Japanese court sentenced about 766 people to death. 609 were executed. But that's a long stretch of time yeah. there, right? So, but it, it's more than you would suspect, given that it took 48 years for this yeah. guy to be on death row. But thank God, because a lot of conservatives will say, like, oh, why don't you just speed up the appeals? Well, if we had sped up the appeals in this case, we would have killed the wrong guy. And so now he's 78. Obviously, his life has been ruined in a lot of ways. Luckily, the Japanese live really long, so he might have another 30 years in him. But, yeah. uh, but man, this was a grave, grave injustice. And you want to talk about justice delayed? Yeah. It doesn't get any more delayed than this. But thank God that they did the DNA check and found out it wasn't him. Absolutely. And, and yet another reason, by the way, not just the U.S., but all countries should stop the death penalty because it's obvious that we keep getting it wrong.